What's up guys, my name is Sebastian Stratman. I hope you guys are having a great day and continue having one. And this is the new AU Card Merge Screens tablet that was just sent to me. I'm about to open it up. Well, I guess I should probably read some of this stuff on the box. 1080p, eight gigabytes of RAM, got all your CarPlay shenanigans. It's got the Merge Screen sticker right on the front there. Um, looks cool. Not really much branding other than the sticker. Overall, I mean, if it's truly eight gigabytes of RAM, that's as powerful as my uh, actual tablet that I have. Okay, my dog was just deciding to say hi. All right, we got uh, some instructions there. Warranty if it applies. But here's the actual screen itself. I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap it. I did my best not to look myself. But there we are. That thing is quite massive. Um, I, I guess it's, I really don't know the size. Let me go see if I can find something to compare it to. All right, so I think this is a pretty decent comparison. This is a, well, I really don't know. I think it's 13.5 inches, but it's a Samsung Series S8 Ultra. I don't know. Something Ultra. It's the biggest freaking tablet Samsung has. And it fits it perfectly, so... Uh, I'd actually assume this might actually have the same processor. They're almost the exact same, uh, almost have the exact same specs. All right, just behind the screen, I haven't moved anything yet, um, is some trim tool kit. Actually, this is pretty thoughtful. I have a trim tool kit, but I don't know where it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and just use these. And if I can get the entire job done with just what they provided, that'd be pretty cool. So I might as well try. It also looks like we have some wiring harnesses. So many connections, I'm gonna have to rip that apart and see which ones I actually wanna use and all that shenanigans, so I'll cut to that. So I'm in the Q60, I got the screen on my lap here. I'm gonna start pulling apart panels. Just did this because I put some of the carbon fiber paneling on. Honestly, I figured I was gonna be removing most of it, so uh, here we go, I'm gonna go ahead and start and try and record as much as possible. All right, so very uno step. You're gonna want to lift up on both of these panels. It's easier to show you on the actual side, but this right here all just pops off with clips. So. I should also say a little early in the video, I do have already an aftermarket infotainment unit from Merge Screens already, uh, but it's actually a uh, module instead of a screen and I'll show you that module here in a minute. I already popped this one off Just like I said it was some clips It just kind of peeled it from this corner and uh, went up from there to try not to break anything be careful But you're gonna have to pull kind of hard after that this just pops out There's no there's nothing holding this in besides some clips this one will actually need some screws in but uh, we'll get there All right, so I got the other side out um, I'm now just going to pop up on this, pull up, there we go, each side. And this is where mine is going to be slightly different than yours. I'm going to have this little module right here with a lot of different connections. So I'm probably going to be pretty damn confused, um, but I can show you as much as I have to do. Uh, to be able to replace everything else, but it should be pretty straightforward. The connections for me are definitely going to be the hardest part because unfortunately I wasn't the one to install this. So I've got to kind of backtrack whatever the last person did. All right, so I ran up and grabbed my drill because we're going to have to start knocking out some screws. Obviously, if you're already here, you're going to know where these screws are, but there's one right here and here, there as well another screw there and another screw there. Uh, these two screws on the side is what's gonna pop out these and we are gonna wanna pop out these vents. All right, so it looks like this little tiny silver piece actually comes out as one. So be super, super careful when taking that out. Um, I don't think there's anything else holding it in other than the harness over here, which I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect. It should just be like, use a flathead screwdriver or whatever, disconnect uh, that little white thing right there. It's bouncing up and down. All right, so once you get that removed, that was a pain in the fucking ass connector. But once you get that removed, you're going to pull this down. Um, yes, you're just going to yank it down. You're going to pull this little lever, and this is going to pop out. 
don't forget to save your clips, all your nuts and bolts, all that good stuff. I'm putting mine actually in my sunroof right here. There's a perfect little divot that it'll keep everything and uh, there's not too many assortments of nails or screws and such, so I'm not really worried about mixing them up. All right, so I got this lifted out. I've done a few stereos before, but I thought this was odd enough to note. Um, but this has a female and male connection in the front here. Um, so if you try and disconnect that, you won't be able to. It's actually the connection lower. Uh, for some reason, they use both a male and female on opposite directions. That was interesting. I've never seen that before. All right, going to lift off these. I don't know, but it doesn't look like there's any... Um, whatchamacallit screws it's like they just pop out indeed they do and they look like this when they're out it's just clips so just pull safely as possible this actually reveals two more screws uh, one right there and one right there i don't think we'll need to get whatever hex nut that is i think that's just part of the stereo but then these should pop out hopefully all right, so yep, I just uh, put, took out those two screws and pulled and it popped right on out. There is three, four, three harnesses that I'm going to have to pull out. And I'll show you what it looks like behind it. Oh man, crushing your thumbs on trim is always the best. But I do plan on actually giving um, this and that screen to a friend that has a 16 or 17 Q5, Q60 um, and seeing if it works for his so he could have CarPlay too. Um, but yeah, this is what it looks like once you pull it off. That's the, the screen and all the dials and such. This screen looks like your basic, uh, two, two screws. I don't think we'll have to take out all this. Um, I'm assuming we don't, but I got to look into that. A lot of what I had to do in the last few minutes was stuff to do with this already. So I didn't really have a need to record that because that's not going to bother most of you. Uh, I was really just changing some connections and making sure they fit this one. Uh, luckily, they did. There was no differences. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and test it out and make sure I made all the connections. And I'll show you what connections I made. All right. So I redid it a couple times just because my audio unit here already was spliced to uh, the connection over here that they give you a harness for uh, that essentially bypasses it and gives you audio uh, out of... The actual carplay unit instead of piggybacking off of the original stereo which is what my original system did uh, but this one does not do that i was trying to make it do that uh, just to make my life easier but uh, it didn't want to so now everything is hooked up uh, i did connect it to carplay and it works it's very smooth it's very smooth actually i was genuinely surprised um Besides, as for other settings, I don't really know how to work any of it yet. That all comes with time. But it seems like if you swipe, you go different directions, like uh, to your previous apps, maybe RPM. I just don't have the car on. Um, yep, I got music to work, and that was my biggest thing. I did check to make sure my AC controls work, my steering wheel button. I mean, my steering wheel controls work, as you can see. Um, I don't know what happens if I do this. Oh. oh, it just changes my back screen. Interesting, it doesn't change anything here. I have a, a non-factory back unit, so it looks like that. Uh, so I guess it just stays in there. I'm not gonna take it out, I guess. I was gonna give it to my friend, but uh, that's a much bigger pain than I want to deal with, so I'm gonna leave it in there, unfortunately. All right, so I have now had this unit, this screen for about a week and I love it. I have had some uh, difficulties with it, but all user error. Make sure you plug in all your connections, use all those connections, um, but d use the video to tear it down. Besides that, it is all plug and play. There's no harnesses that shouldn't connect or they, where they could or whatever the case. Everything is very, very easy. The CarPlay works super, super phenomenal. I love it when driving, it's super, super nice, uh, especially with how large the screen is. If you like taking turns or, uh, like I guess doing track uh, on mountains and stuff like that. I guess that's the way you could call it toge runs um, It shows you your turns way before they happen. So that's super nice to have uh, Especially in a track car or like a mountain racer 
there's so many settings and so many apps that you can mess with it already has youtube spotify disney plus chrome bunch of other stuff downloaded i downloaded soundcloud because that's what i like to use um this is what your factory unit is going to look like so you still have all your normal controls your settings all that remains you also do have the choice to use your factory amp if you don't want to use the one supplied um and with the screen itself but i absolutely love it 10 out of 10 makes the interior look three times better i definitely dig it and would recommend hope you guys have a great day and like the video peace